How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and over here we talk stocks and we focus on one thing. Always protect your profits. And today we're going to be talking about OCGN. It continues to remain consistent being in the tight range that it's currently in holding down that mid $7 range. I'm getting a lot of messages saying, Dre, what do you think is going to happen to this stock? The who approval is coming. Where do you think it's going to go? I did a video on that, but I want to make sure as far as for today's update video, I keep you in the loop so you're prepared for Tuesday. So I won't waste any more time. Let's jump into the agenda. If you're new to this channel, I just want to let you know we have timestamps down below inside the description. But if you are a shareholder or you're thinking about taking a position, I highly suggest you watch this full entire video. So the first thing we're going to go over is the technical analysis. We're going to be taking a look at the overall price action, seeing that support, seeing those levels of resistance and the type of move we want to look forward to going into Tuesday and for the rest of the week. And then afterwards, we're going on Fintel, taking a look at the recent short interest information and as well as recent institutional ownership. We already know when it comes to the short volume ratio, depending on how high it may be, it can bring a lot of volatility into the stock and impact the stock price. And then we're going to be taking a look at the order flow distribution. We want to know where institutions loading up on shares on Friday. Were they buying? Were they selling? We're going to find out. And then when all of that is done, we'll be going into the final thoughts and as well as some more key details. So let's get to it. So we're going to be doing a technical analysis for OCGN. Let's see how it performed on Friday. So ended up closing at $7.43, being down 2.88%. On the low, it tested $7.30, and then on the high, testing $7.67. When we take a look at the volume stats on the day, you can see we traded at 6.861 million shares, and the average volume over 10 trading days being at 6.882 million shares. So pretty much right around the same there, but we ended up seeing some selling prices pressure on the Friday, which is of no surprise. But again, it wasn't that dramatic when we take a look at the pullback. Now, the chart we're using is a one-year daily chart. You can see from the RSI down below, it is right around 50.17. So it's in the middle there. We continue to have strength above the 200-day. We are below the 100-day, but we are sitting on the 50-day and with the 21-day EMA being at 745, and we close at 743. So not a big difference there. So we continue to consolidate and build support in this mid seven dollar range on the friday we ended up seeing a high of seven dollars and 67 cents but what's very interesting we've seen in the past we have been to higher highs right we've tested 798 795 and even going all the way to the 770 range as well so what i want to see going into tuesday and as far as for the rest of the week i want us to break through this right i want us to get to this eight dollar level and of course i wouldn't be surprised if we get met with some selling pressure here because it is a resistance area and it's clearly been shown. And another thing I like to refer this $8 level as, as a psychological area. Many people will see this and be like, oh, there should be a lot more momentum that should be coming with this move. And I accept that for the fact that, hey, we can look forward to seeing a move going here to around $8.35 and seeing where we could actually go from there. We are waiting on the catalyst from who, of course. So I feel like getting that catalyst, we can make some strong moves, even going to the $9 range and easily getting to the $10 range as well. I think that is very doable. But of course, that's only going to happen if we have a lot of volume coming into the stock. So we're on Fintel. We're going to take a look at the recent institutional ownership and short interest information for OCGN. So green rows indicate new positions, while red rows indicate closed positions. So what we could see here for August the 30th being the newest position we have here from Bridge Builder Small Mid Cap is at 67,844. But we could see for September the 3rd, we have some positions here as far as the value change. You can see from the percentages and also by the values, we have 617,000 and as well as 8,000 being a recent changes that were made. Now, when we take a look at the short interest, as we scroll down on the page, short shares availability is at 1.3 million updated 22 minutes ago and for the short ball fee rate it is at 3.27 percent now taking a look at the history of the short volume ratio we can see for the close of the first it is at 46.49 and the close for the second being at 48.12 and then for the close on friday being at 63 
Wow. So just taking into consideration that 63%, there's a lot of negative market, market sentiment around OCGN. And of course, hey, we're waiting on that WHO approval. If it doesn't end up going through, then of course, shorts want to be able to actually benefit from this. And you could see by the fact of the way they've been piling on in regards to short shares. So that's just something to keep in mind. There's going to be a lot of volatility. Just know that. And as far as the price action is concerned, we're still in a really good spot. Now let's take a look at the order flow distribution for OCGN. So we could see here on the inflow, it was at 8,748. And then on the outflow, it was at 10,495. We had zero on the large for both. On the medium, we had 4,691, this is the inflow side. And then on the small, we had 4,056. On the outflow side, on the medium, we had 6,671. And then on the small being at 3,824. So you can see that we had a surplus when it came to small scale orders. So again, that could be attributed to retail investors and traders. So now when we take a look at the large scale orders in the last five days, as far as for Friday, we see zero and we also saw zero on the second. And we went over the inflow day that we had on the first and also had zeros on the 30th and as well as the 31st. So this is part of the reasons why we're seeing a a lot of stabilization inside of the stock price. When I took a look at what went down inside the after hours on Friday, looks like we closed around $7.50. And this is a good level for us. Again, we're just continuing to stay on support and I have no issues about that whatsoever. And as far as institutions are concerned, they are not loading up on shares. And again, this is no surprise going into this three day long weekend. So now let's jump into the final thoughts and I'll give you guys a little bit more details as well. So for my final thoughts for OCGN, it's definitely going to be interesting for the coming week. And part of the reasons being is when we went on Fintel, taking a look at the short volume ratio, it is well over 60%. So that just tells us there's a lot of shorts who are inside of this play and they're looking at it like this. It's either A, they're not gonna be able to get that who approval or B, there's gonna be continuous delays and people are going to be selling out of their positions due to a lack of confidence. That's exactly how they're looking at this play and I feel like if you're a bull on the other side, you need to understand that and be aware of that and it's part of the reasons why. Know all the risks that you are getting involved with when you go into a particular play and we already know that clearly on this channel and is why I always preach you want to make sure you have high conviction if you're inside of OCGN and it's also another reason why as far as for your overall portfolio it shouldn't be made up of mainly stocks like these that are extremely volatile as far as what we also can see from the short interest there's the negative market sentiment there they're looking at the current price and they're saying hey it needs to come down it is not justified for it to be where it's currently at so now that you understand that and you're aware of that then you know hey what is my strategy going to be of course you should have had this strategy planned out from a long time ago whether if you want to be in this play for the short the medium or for the long term I, for myself, I see the potential in this play and it's part of the reasons why I continue to be inside of it. And I do feel that they should be able to get that E well from who, and that's what I'm looking forward to. But if they don't end up getting it, it really wouldn't bother me that much because again, I do not have a lot of my portfolio in this particular play. And I'm just hoping for the rest of you that you're following a similar strategy. If you're going out there and you're going YOLO with your whole portfolio inside of this play, of course, I'm gonna say good luck, but I would say good luck luck either way but do understand the risk that are involved because like I said I care about you guys and I care about your overall mental health I don't want you panicking having anxiety being nervous because I'm getting a lot of messages saying like Dre oh my gosh do you think that this is gonna happen where do you see the price going and so on I did a video not too long ago right before this one talking about where the stock price could go after the approval and of course I'm going to continue to stick by seeing the $9 to the $10 range. I feel like if we can get above 10 things could start looking really good. So with all that said I hope that you're enjoying your long weekend and I can't wait for Tuesday and for the rest of this week to start. We'll be talking real soon.